Bubba Wells is Austin Peay's man of steel. He has the rods at both legs to prove it, and now he's back. After missing the first 12 games of the year, he's averaging over 31 points a game and leads the Governors into the OBC Tournament Championship versus the Murray State Racers. And for Murray State. From the Nashville Arena, it's the LBC Championship game featuring the Murray State Racers and the Governors of Austin P. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Nashville, Tennessee. With Jay Billis, I'm Dwayne Stats. Great to have you with us. Jay, the truth of the matter is the heart and soul of the Austin P. Governors team is Bubba Wells, not only with his scoring, but he makes his teammates better around him. Well, that's a great point. When you think Bubba Wells, you have to think scoring, and this young man can really ring the bell. Ten of the 18 games that he's played in for Austin P. he scored 30 or more points. That includes games of 46, 43, and 40. He scores in a variety of ways, but just his presence opens up things for Reggie Crenshaw and Joe Sibbett. For Mark Gottfried, the Murray State head coach, it has been a major rebuild this year. Only one starter back from last year, that the senior forward Vincent Rainey and that's a good one to have back I love Vincent Rainey an outstanding scorer around the baseline he's like the Adrian Danley or the Mark Aguirre of the Ohio Valley Conference he's great around the basket averaging around 22 points a game and he teams with a couple of teammates to form a very potent perimeter game a rematch of last year's championship matchup in the OBC Murray State and Austin P coming up Nashville to Nashville Arena. Austin P come again 17 and 13. Murray State 19 wins and nine losses, each 12 and 6 in the Ohio Valley Conference. And we'll take a look at the starting lineups for this championship matchup. Murray State, Chad Townsend out front, coming off his best game, a 22-point performance against Middle Tennessee. Reggie Crenshaw may be a key for Austin P if he can step outside, hit something from outside, and Maybe give Wells a little more operating room inside. Bubba Wells is really nice. If he can hit that outside shot, will really open up things for the leading scorer for the Governors. And the opening tip controlled by Austin P. Colby Pierce running the point. Both these teams play solid man to man defense. Underneath and the first shot of the game by Pierce in and out. And Murray State comes back. Chad Townsend, a 6-1 junior, is a whistle. And a whistle toward the corner away from the ball. You go against Joe Simmons. That's a very difficult matchup. Chad Townsend pushing the ball up the court. At 23 years old, he is very strong, especially with the ball. Out to Townsend. Puts it on the floor against Sibbett. Now Rainey, the leading scorer on Murray State, spinning inside. Dishes off to Mays, and he draws first blood to Terry Mays, a 6'3 junior out of Montgomery, Alabama, who did not play high school basketball. Now Wells will try to answer and misses his first shot. Rainey keeps it alive, and it's pulled away by Hamilton. Townsend hopping from about 15. Townsend hits, and Murray State breaks out in front. Chad Townsend picking up where he left off against Middle Tennessee State. Had his best outing of the year, 22 points, and he did a nice job of running the team and distributing the ball. Mark Gottfried really likes his point guard. Colby Pierce, a senior out of St. Louis, Missouri, working against Townsend. Austin P. looking for his first bucket of the game. Grinshaw on a whistle along the baseline. And a foul coming against Murray State. Reggie Crenshaw was very effective last night against Tennessee Tech at taking Lorenzo Coleman, the seven foot one player inside for Tennessee Tech, away from the basket. He did a nice job also defensively. Mike Witherspoon with a basketball just inside the free throw line from the corner of the key puts it up and in. Witherspoon, a 6'5 junior. 
He's been doing most of the starting in the middle. And that's Witherspoon's first basket against Murray State this season. In their two previous games, he had zero points total. This one rolls off. Rainey will try to put it back. His own man Harris in his way. Harris retrieves the ball. Still along the baseline. It's still alive. And now a violation will give the ball back to Austin P. Austin P did not do a particularly good job of blocking out. They need to find people down low and put bodies on them. They can be a very good rebounding team. Reggie Crenshaw, third in the conference in rebounding over nine a game. If you give him a look, he is deadly. And they stand right with him. And he's been especially deadly since Bubba Wells has been back into the lineup. Defenses can't afford to push up on him, and he's had some open shots. Wells. With a pass to the left side and a give underneath and a block and a whistle and a foul. Crenshaw trying to go to the hoop. This will be the second foul. Charge to Murray State. Harris will be charged with this one. Rainey picked up the other one. Bubba Wells didn't force the shot on that occasion. And when he reversed the ball to Colby Pierce, Pierce did a nice job of penetrating. Pierce is not one that looks for his shot a great deal. He always thinks pass first. But when he's aggressive with the ball, things open up. And Crenshaw, a 72% free throw shooter, converts at Austin P as a team hitting 67% for the year. The better free throw shooting team is Murray State at 74. Free throws always big when you get down to championship competition. Also, executing in the half court going to be very, very important. A little 1-2-2 press put on by Austin P. Harris front court off to Townsend. Townsend works his way. A pass out of the corner. Mays will pop it. Harris tries to keep it alive. Saves it, but Sibbett will come down to the basketball for Austin P. Got Wells. Wells takes it inside to the hoop. It will not drop for him, but he draws a whistle. Wells has been pretty patient thus far in the game. He only had 18 points against Middle Tennessee State, so you know he's going to be looking to score. Little jab, step, move, taking it to the basket. What a nice job by Chad Townsend to step in front. Dave Luce will probably be arguing that Townsend was too far underneath to draw the charge, and that should have been at best a no call. So Wells charged with his first foul of the game. See, Townsend is trying to post up Sibbett down low. Good job by Witherspoon to help out. Hamilton over Wells, not going to go. Pierce with a pass ahead to Wells. Wells has it deflected. What a defensive play by Mays, and Murray State comes back to the ball. Townsend off to Hamilton. 15 footer will not go. The put back. Harris put a whistle, and the bucket's not going to count. Harris used that off arm to push off. He used his right arm to tip it in, but you're right, man. What a tremendous play by DeTerry Mays to block that dunk by Bubba Wells. You're not going to see that kind of play very often, and Mark Gottfried has got to be happy with the way this game has started. And Mark Gottfried's done a tremendous job with this Murray State basketball team. The former assistant at UCLA was on the bench with Jim Herrick when the Bruins won their national championship in 1995. Darren Dawson in the game for Murray State now. Austin P. had to come from behind to win their game yesterday. 50% from the floor in the second half. Wells to the bucket and up and in. And that's where he is so dangerous, down low along the blocks. And Reggie Crenshaw can step out and hit from the perimeter, so he doesn't necessarily have to be another big guy inside for Austin P. Austin P. can also come in with Jake Powers, put him on the perimeter, and let Bubba Wells do his magic down low. Townsend. Brady. In the corner of the key, puts it up. It would not go, but here's a whistle coming. And a foul against Austin P. This one will be assessed against Mike Witherspoon. He sent Rainey to the line, a 77% free throw shooter. Murray State runs the UCLA high post offense. And Mark Gottfried using what he learned from Jim Herrick, who once told him to teach what you know and make sure that you know what you teach. Run that little shuffle cut off the top, the high post that John Wooden was so successful and Jim Herrick was so successful with the UCLA. Rainey gives Murray a one-point edge. 
Timeout on the floor with 15.50 to play in the half. 7-6, Murray State. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight... Murray State up by one over Austin P in the early stages of the championship game here of the OVC in Nashville, Tennessee. Championship week continues. Later today, it will be the College of Charleston, 27-2, number 20 in the country, taking on Florida International, coming up at 4 p.m. on ESPN. Abel Wells, and again, averaging 31.4 a game. He has three games this year in which he has hit 40 or better. And Dave Luce was talking this morning, saying it's great to be the coach of Bubba Wells. You know that he certainly missed him the 12 games he was out with that stress fracture in his left leg. Governors with the basketball. Looking inside off the glass. The shot's not going to go by Witherspoon. Townsend back for the Racers. Inside, works his way in and puts it up and in. Oh, what a nice move by Chad Townsend. A little up and under, and he's really looking to score more. You could see he was getting a shot off last night very effectively against Middle Tennessee State, and he's carried it over into today. Wow, puts it up, and it will back. Just got an amazing touch, ability to get the ball up from a lot of different places. You're going to see some tremendous shots from Bubba Wells today. He is by no means through. And a quick move down to the baseline. Rainey shot will not go. Underneath it's knocked out of bounds. And will belong to Austin P. Looked like the Terry Mays kicked it when it was knocked away. And the players have been complaining a little bit. They love this floor in the Nashville arena. But they've been saying the rims are a little bit tight. The first 12 games of the year without Bubba Wells, Austin P, 4 and 8, 13 and 5. Since then, to wind up here in the OBC Championship game of the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament Championship matchup. Arnell Hamilton and Bubba Wells are going at it down low. Wells at 6 5. Charles Barkley type player, very strong. And he was able to hold off Hamilton, who was draped all over him on the low block and picked up the foul. Well, Hamilton will be charged with his second foul. Matt Harris also has two for Murray State. Here's Wells popping. But will not drop this time. Murray State coming back to the basketball. Vincent Rainey into the front court. Bubba Wells might need to get something easy to get him started, something down low. He struggled getting off the mark last night against Middle Tennessee State. He came up with only 18 points. He meant only. That's his low. He's in a slump. Rainey, double team down there. Dawson returns it to Rainey. Returns and loses the ball as he tried to go up against Witherspoon. Witherspoon, a terrific defender, got great hands. Crenshaw, and Crenshaw gets hot from outside. That's a very good sign for Austin P. and could be more trouble for Murray State. And he's just a different player since Bubba Wells has come back. The weight of the world is now off of Reggie Crenshaw's shoulders. He doesn't have to carry the governors. Now it's Bubba Wells. He can just look for open opportunities. And he's looking for an opportunity inside the lane. It rolls off, and Crenshaw is there to rebound. Pierce. Crenshaw. Back to Pierce Crenshaw on the two meetings between these two teams earlier this year has had two great games. They split those two right down the middle, taking advantage of the home court. Witherspoon thinking about it, and a whistle and a foul against Murray State. Dawson is matched up there against Witherspoon, and he's charged with a foul. Colby Pierce has done a nice job of running this Austin P team. He's a guy that looks to pass first and shoot second. But he needs to pull the ball out and create some order so that they can get the ball into Wells and establish him down low. Everything's got to emanate from Bubba Wells. And a Sibbett from three. Not going to go. Jack Powers just into the game, replacing Witherspoon with a rebound. And Sibbett misses again. Hamilton rebounds for Murray State. Powers just has a knack for being around the ball. Very smart player out of Indiana. Cross to Townsend. It's a two-point game. Austin P. out in front. Murray State with a basketball. Murray State going to a one-four set. Mays. Not going to go for him. 
And Powers rebounds. Mays has had it in the basket twice, and it's come out for him each time. Here's trailing on Simmons. Looking inside for some action. Wells and Mays really going at it low. Now Pierce will pop it. It will roll off and Rainey rebound. Looks like Wells is getting a little bit frustrated with the good defense by Mays. Townsend throws it away underneath and right there waiting is Colby Pierce. Three defenders back for Murray State and Pierce Spears left. Good decision to pull it back out. The numbers just weren't there. State got out in front. Austin P up by two at the moment. Well, that's a nice job by Terry Mays. Green shot and Wells. It will not go, but a whistle. And they called the block on Townsend. The Dallas number ten, Townsend number ten, Murray State. Here's Wells working. Mays trying to keep in front. That means you can go over the top. Weak side help just a little bit late getting over. But a heck of an idea by Chad Townsend to come over and help out his teammate who has worked incredibly hard to keep the ball away from the big gun, Bubba Wells. And Hamilton leaves. Dennis Dahl reports into the game. And Aaron Page is in the place of Vincent Rainey. At the line for Austin Peay, number 13, Bubba Wells. Bubba Wells will go to the line. Murray State really doesn't have that 6'5 great athlete that can match up with Bubba Wells. So they're going to have to try an awful lot of different people on him and some different techniques. Mays doing a nice job of breaking contact to get around in front in order to defend him in the low post. That's just going to be a difficult matchup. Nobody can stop Bubba Wells all year long. This one will not drop for him. One of two from the line for Wells. Ball down to the basketball. A three-point contest. Austin P on top. Bouncing. And with the ball for Murray State. The screen by Dahl. Bouncing. Back out to Dawson. Austin P is doing a nice job of defending Murray State's offense. They're keeping between their man and the basket. Nice head down by Reggie Crenshaw. Now Townsend pops it from just outside the line. Wells on the rebound. Goldie Pierce. Power wants to take it. Baseline up and in. Jack Power is the junior out of Richmond, Indiana. This Austin P team. When Bubba Wells came back, struggled a little bit by watching him work too much offensively. And that carried over to the defensive end a little bit, and they stood around defensively. But now they're hitting on all cylinders, both on the offensive end and down on the defensive end. Johnson. And a 10 on the shot clock. Terry Mays working in. Up and no good, but a whistle. Austin P charged with a foul. This one will be against Pierce. Murray State's success offensively is going to depend upon its guards. Vincent Rady, to Terry Mays, and Chad Townsend account for 71% of the Racers' points, over 50% of their rebounds. They also shoot over 70% of their free throws. So you know that trio of players is going to have the ball in their hands at all times and be looking to score. Mays at the line, Adrian Sensabaugh into the game for Sibbett for Austin P. Mays, an all-conference first-teamer, hits this one. What a great story to Terry Mays is. Did not play high school basketball, but now in his first full year of college basketball, leading this team. In 27 double-figure games in scoring. Hits this one from the line. Timeout. It's a 14-11 contest with 10-24 to play in the half. Tim Duncan, a 12-point first half. The fifth Wake Forest player over 2,000. But Florida State getting it done. Kerry Thompson and company. Frustrating Duncan inside Lamar Greer feeds Thompson here. If Florida State does win this game, Duke is the number one seed in the ACC no matter what happens at North Carolina tomorrow. Wait. A three-point game here with 10-23 left to go in the first half. Austin P with the lead and the basketball. 
Adrian sends the ball. Goldie Pierce out front. Big Powers on the floor, takes the bounce pass and puts it up the end. So Powers to the bucket. He's in the book again. Murray State going with a 2-3 zone on that last possession, trying to keep the ball out of the middle of the floor. And it was easier to get the ball inside out of the 2-3 zone than it was against their man defense. Jim Townsend working against Sensible. Now Page gets a three, and it's good. Aaron Page, the 6'5 freshman out of Austin, Texas, hits a three. Cross-country runner in high school, a good standstill jump shooter. Gives them a nice dimension coming off the bench. Sticking with that 2-3 zone. And Austin P getting some flashes in the middle. They'll try to screen the side as well. Wells will pop back to the rim and out. Powers rebounding. Wells with a pass intended for Sensabaugh. Knocked away and out of bounds. Belonging to Austin P. Aaron Page in there to break it up. Jake Powers is just always around the basketball. Got a real nose for it. And he gets his hands on the ball a lot. Deflections. Kid that knows how to play, always hustles and gives 110 percent. And given that tape on his nose, you would think, I guess he does have a nose for the basketball. Well, that's a three. Maybe that'll get him started a little bit. You can sense that he's getting frustrated out there. He wants the ball in his hands so that he can put some points on the board and help this team get to the NCAA tournament. He's a 42 percent three-point shooter. It's a five-point spread. Rainey will pop this one. It's not going to go. Pierce kept it alive and comes down with the ball. A long pass intended for Crenshaw. He could not gather it. Ball still alive. And Rainey back for Murray State. Knocked away against Wells and Pierce. And down to Crenshaw on the duck. Randy Crenshaw takes that one home. Crenshaw did a great job of running the court. The pass from Colby Pierce just a little bit too far. But he got caught back and it worked out very well for him off the steal by Wells. It's a three for Dawson, a big three for Murray State. Aaron Dawson, the sophomore out of LaGrange, Kentucky. And it's a four-point game. Very important that you push out on Dawson and Page, two pretty good three-point shooters. But when you've got guys like Rainey and like Townsend who can put the ball on the floor and penetrate, that's going to open up some shots from the perimeter. Sensiball pops and buries that one. That's a two. Adrian Sensiball. Austin P wants to up-tempo this ball game a little bit. Murray State would rather have it a little bit slower. They're going to run when they have the chance, but they want to execute in the half court, and that is not good half court execution. Run over. Off the fingertips of Dawson as he went leaping for that basketball. Timeout 23 17. Austin B with 7.27 to play on the half. Austin P grabbing a 23 17 lead over Murray State. These two teams with great history. Murray State under second year coach Mark Gottfried. He has continued the success enjoyed by Murray State through the years. Eight straight trips to the finals in the tournament. They've won the tournament five of the last seven years and dropped last year's tournament championship game to Austin P 70 68 in a controversial call with just under a second left to play when Reggie Crenshaw went to the line and hit two free throws to end that one. This is actually the third straight year these two teams have met in the Ohio Valley Championship game. And that's never happened before. And you mentioned that controversial ending to last year's championship game. I thought that Mark Godfrey did a tremendous job of handling a very difficult situation. Obviously, he and his team were very disappointed in the way that game finished out. But I thought he was very gracious and handled it very professionally in his first year as a head coach. He was most disappointed for the seniors on that team, as we mentioned earlier. Rainey, the only starting senior returning to this club. Murray State coming back with the basketball. As it turned out, they went on to the NIT and dropped an 89-85 decision to Missouri. And Austin P, who garnered the NCAA bid, lost to Georgia Tech 97 in their first round game. But they played Georgia Tech tough for most of that game, and Reggie Crenshaw was fantastic against the Yellow Jackets. He had 22. You see Harris back in the game. He's playing with two fouls. Austin P just playing great man-to-man -man defense. And the three on the shot clock. 
Rainey could not get it away. That was blocked. A great play by Witherspoon. They have one second left on the shot clock. Just enough time for a catch and shoot. Here's Rainey putting it on the floor. Gets by Witherspoon, and Witherspoon just makes a saving play. And that one is too long, so the time expires. It did not draw the rim. And the ball goes to Austin P. Even though Murray State has had its problems, they're only two possessions down. And Dwayne, don't you get the feeling that Bubba Wells is getting increasingly more frustrated? I think he's forcing it a little bit down on the offensive end. Well, sets a screen for Sibbett, who runs into Harris, but rolls it up and in on the layup. That's a play without Bubba Wells that never would have materialized off that high screen. The defense had to concentrate on Wells, and Sibbett was able to get across it or over the top of that screen and finish the play in the lane. And he's looking to get rid of the ball, and now timeout. At 22nd for Murray State. Austin P has opened this 25-17 lead. Internet servers catch the wave of the exciting new OBC. Dave Blue is very pleased for his basketball team. Early on in the season, they started out two and eight without Wells. And they were very pleased to get him back. And he was really pleased with the way his team welcomed back Bubba Wells. There was not any jealousy of the nation's leading scorer. Just did a tremendous job. And he's done a fine coaching job keeping this team together under very difficult circumstances. This is their record month by month. And Dave Luce, here Thursday, honored as the Ohio Valley Coach of the Year, said he cast his vote for his opponent this afternoon and Mark Godfrey. Well, Mark Godfrey lost four starters including Marcus Brown off last year's team and he's got them back in the championship game. He did a tremendous job on the Murray State bench. Brown gave him better than 26 points a game last year. Here's Mays. Will not go for him. And Jake Powers is in with the rebound. And again for Terry Mays, the rim a little bit tight. Sends a ball, Sibbett with Wells. And Powers, Witherspoon, the five on the floor for Austin P. Wells pops in and out from three. Harris with a rebound. Townsend Rainey running the floor on the right side, but he didn't see him, and Townsend takes it up. It will not go, but the tip put in by Harris, and that was just legal. Nice job by Townsend to bring in the ball down the court. When he's got Sibbett on him, he's got to take advantage of that matchup. He's bigger and he's stronger than Sibbett. And I think a little bit quicker. He can create some things off the dribble, force help and recover situations, and get some nice things for Murray State. Since the ball denied the baseline by Townsend. Powers took the pass and put it up, missed it, but a whistle. And a charge is coming against Austin P. It will be against Mike Witherspoon. That will be number two on Witherspoon. Guess who's right in the middle of it? Chad Townsend. That's the third opportunity he's had to take a charge. And the second one, he's got called in his favor. Witherspoon departs, and Reggie Crenshaw returns to the game for Austin P. Crenshaw, the junior. He's the leading rebounder on this Austin P team. To Terry Mays. Rainey off the high post, working against Wells. Knocked away. Sibbett there to pick it up. Shovels it ahead to Sinchabal, but that's a double dribble. And the turnover gives the ball right back to Murray State. And you could tell Joe Sibbett's eyes were getting huge as he saw Adrian Sensabaugh running down the left side of the court, wide open for a layup. Just mishandled the ball. And only three turnovers for Austin P yesterday in 40 minutes against Middle Tennessee State. Just a tremendous performance. Or excuse me, Tennessee Tech. Tremendous leaves and Pierce is back in there for Austin P. Pierce. Mays against Sensabaugh hangs up there and it will not go down for him. And here's a whistle coming against Rainey over the back. Wells winds up on the floor. He's taking a little time and getting up, but he is okay. As Vincent Rainey is charged with a foul, and will walk to the other end of the floor with the bonus situation now in effect. 3:56 left to play in the first half. Austin P has broken out in front, 25-19. The Terry Mays has had at least four shots that have been in and out, whether it's from inside or from the perimeter. He's gotten some good looks, and the iron has been unkind. That gives Wells nine. 
take a look at Mark Gottfried, an outstanding player when he was in college. Played for Wimp Sanderson at Alabama, along with Jim Farmer, Buck Johnson, Derek McKee, Bobby Lee Hurt. Went to the Sweet 16 three consecutive times while he was a guard in the Crimson Tide program. And Wells converts them both to put him in double figures. Timeout on the floor with Austin P leading by eight. Final game for Dale Brown in Baton Rouge. LSU taking on Arkansas. Arkansas has lost two of its last three, but Pat Bradley has now school record 45 straight games with a three. The Hogs at 15 and 10 overall lead LSU by two. Dwayne and Jay. Austin P leading Murray State 27-19. The field goal breakout. Austin P 8 of 14. From two point range and Murray State, three of 13 overall coming into this game. Murray State hitting 45% from the floor and Austin P, 46%. Murray State's missed a couple of open looks, but it's been due in large measure to the great half court defense played by Austin P. And they can afford to be aggressive now. They've only got five team fouls in this first half, so they've got a foul to give. Dawson working now to Rainey. Bounce it on the floor with Harris and Mays with five. All the racers from Murray State. Rainey's got to go right at Bubba Wells. See if he can get him a little bit of foul trouble. Townsend down to three on the shot clock. Hits a three. Chad Townsend. He's got nine points now, continuing to build on that performance that he had last night. Pierce. Holding the ball out front for Austin P. Pierce has been solid running this team. He's had his head up all the time looking for people. He's barking out orders. Done what a point guard should do. Now he penetrates and dishes off underneath. This is Crenshaw looking for room and turns it over. Dawson stepping in there. One of the few times that Austin P hasn't even gotten a shot at the basket. Mays down in the corner. An inadvertent whistle over there by one of the officials. He says, continue play. Townsend out of the corner, Mays, and he is fouled. Well, this same situation happened last night. What sounded like a whistle, the referees say, no, that's a sneaker on this floor. And last night, in one of the semifinal games, it was absolutely deafening. It sounded like a referee's whistle. Everybody just stopped, but the referees let play go along. Similar situation. And Mays will go to the line. He'll be shooting three. Fouled outside the arc. Young man, the newcomer of the year in the Ohio Valley Conference. Top 20 in the United States in scoring. And right at an 80% free throw shooter. Sends the ball leaves and Sibbett is back. Mays out of Montgomery, Alabama. One year not eligible to play in high school. Transferred his senior year and had eight returning seniors ahead of him. No chance to play on that team. So he was a walk-on in junior college. And his decision came down to Murray State or Arkansas Little Rock. And guess who Mark Gottfried had to go up against in recruiting him? Wimp Sanderson, his old coach. I wonder if he wore one of those loud jackets in the Mays' home. Mays puts this one up and in. So it's a two-point game. Murray State has come right back. And a loose ball. Rainey forced the turnover. Townsend in possession. Screened by Harris, and Townsend pops to tie it. 27-27 at 2.13. And Austin B calls for a 20-second timeout. So the governors have seen their lead disappear, and it's all tied at 27. Tomorrow, ESPN welcomes back NASCAR. The NASCAR Pontiac Excitement 400 at 1 p.m. Eastern, the Richmond International Raceway in Richmond, Virginia. 400 laps, 300 miles from the Richmond International Raceway. 38 racers as Jeff Gordon defends his championship, all competing for better than $1.4 million in prize money. Chad Townsend bringing the ball down the court. He had to Terry Mays wide open for a jump shot. 
but he's been shooting the ball so well the last couple of games he kept it himself and you know Mark Gottfried awfully glad that he did tying this game up with two minutes to go in the first half It's a three, his first shot. Ivory's a streak shooter. And when you're a streak shooter, you always like to hit your first one. He's been bothered by some turf toe this year, but it didn't seem to bother him on that possession. Rainey from the post high. Turning, looking for Townsend. And here's a whistle as Townsend put it on the floor. He's fouled by Joe Sibbett. That's what Townsend has to do. He can take Simmons off the dribble. He's bigger and he's stronger and he's quicker. Coming up at the half. The third tourney bid is in. Mike Tirico will inform us all about the College of Charleston. Update the bubble. Wake Forest and FSU going at it. All of that at the half coming up. And Townsend goes to the line. It is in and out and back in again. In the game for Murray State. Chad Townsend leads this team in assists. He's second in the Ohio Valley Conference. And he's a guy, the first in the history of Murray State to put 200 assists up on the board in a single season. Harris leaves. Arnell Hamilton back for Murray State. And Townsend converts this one. He had 16 assists in a game against Eastern Illinois earlier this year. Speaking of Townsend. He's a second teamer in the Ohio Valley Conference. He was recruited as a baseball player, and Mark Godfrey took a chance on him, and it really paid off. To Terry Mays really going at it with Bubba Wells down low. And deny Wells the ball, it's knocked out of bounds. Belonging to Austin P. Wells needs to do something by rubbing Mays off the screen or trying to create some space to bump him off because he has gotten absolutely nothing down low. Mays is using his quickness to break contact and get around in front, and he's discouraged passes. Under 10 on the shot clock. Pierce will put it up. It's not going to go. Tipped out front. Cinch ball off with it. Pierce tries it again. This is off the glass. And Hamilton rebounds. Murray State back. Townsend. Townsend, little stutter step. He pops and it's not going to drop. Hamilton back out front. They have 35 seconds left in the half. Basically, they'll be able to take the last shot if they run the shot clock all the way down. They'll have just enough time for a tip it if they were to miss. Austin P probably won't have enough time to take it back. Not a bad shot by Townsend because he could have gotten a two for one on that possession. And Murray State has the ball to start out the second half so they can get a little bit of a run going through halftime. The Austin P lead is one. And the six on the shot clock. And Townsend puts it up and in. That's good. Townsend a big bucket to give Murray State the lead. Now with just under a second left, Ivory launches it from near half court. No good. And the score at the half finds Murray State up by one, leading Austin P. It's a 31-30 contest. Exactly what everybody was looking for from Nashville. Now let's go to the studio and join Mike Tirico. Okay, Dwayne, so the one and two seeds involved in a good one. These are teams that you're probably going to look at as a 15 seed. There are RPI rankings between 185 and 200, but they've always caused trouble historically in the tournament, and you can see some quality basketball from these teams in the first half. Coming up here at halftime, we'll tell you about the third team to join the field of 64, and we'll look at all the teams that are on the bubble and in action today. It's all coming up in a couple of minutes. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by the car that makes waves. The new Eclipse from Mitsubishi, built for living. Austin P represented the OVC last year, Murray State two years ago. Right now, it's the racers leading the governors by one. This automatic bid, four 30 automatic bids, 34 at-large bids to make the field of 64, which you'll hear about on the selection special, 6.30 Eastern, a week from tomorrow. As far as bid number three, it was decided a couple of hours ago on ESPN, the Big South Conference Championship game. Liberty on its home floor, taking on Charleston Southern. Larry Jackson for Liberty, making 
Jerry Falwell quite, quite proud. His team was up, but Charleston came back. Orlando Arutanier was the story from the outside, and for the first time ever, Charleston Southern is in the tournament. They beat Liberty 64 to 54. Liberty loses the championship game on its home floor for the second straight year. Let's make it perfectly clear. Charleston Southern is not the College of Charleston. They're coming up in about an hour on ESPN. So this could be a big day for Charleston. Could send two to the field of 64. Now the teams from the major conferences that are on the bubble in some cases, trying to get their tournament hopes locked down. Cal has had a very good season, second in the Pac-10, but their stud scorer, Ed Gray, is out for the season with a broken foot. Stanford and Cal, always a rivalry, a little more important today. Pete Sauer off the nice feed from Brevin Knight. Later in the first half, Stanford passing it well again. Knight to Rich Jackson to David Mosley for the triple. Stanford has led most of the way, and they are up comfortably at Maples by 18. A Stanford win, and both of these teams will be 10 and 6 in the conference. So Stanford trying to make its late push. In the Big East, they're settling seating today. Boston College, Notre Dame. Pat Garrity, Big East Player of the Year, many think, gets the Irish within one. But Dan Ye Abrams, the police preseason player of the year in the conference, put BC back up seven. Under three minutes to go. Ardmore White, the tough shot. Tie game. But BC, down the stretch, you know where they're going. Dan Ye Abrams. Got it to go. Boston College. Beat Notre Dame by two. What that means is Boston College is the three seed. Significance of that, yeah, they share the Big East title, but the real important thing, they don't have to play on Wednesday in the first round. They get a bye to Thursday. Same true of the top seed, Villanova. Earned that tie of the Big East seven title with Villan with uh, Boston College as the Wildcats handled Rutgers 84-74. to Alvin Williams has career-high 31 against Rutgers earlier this year and eclipsed it against the same team today. In the Atlantic 10, important game for Temple and UMass. Larry Kettner, the spin, the jam, the foul. Two teams some don't consider on the bubble because they played such good non-conference schedules. Pepe Sanchez, the freshman point guard with the big triple, tight throughout. They've reached the break at the Mullen Center in Amherst, and UMass leads by three. Both of these teams with power rankings in the 30s. Hard to find two teams with better non-conference schedules. So even though 17 wins, they will be probably on the positive end of the bubble. Other bubble teams include Rhode Island, leading by 19 at Fordham, 12 and four. Rhode Island second in the Atlantic 10 East into 18 wins, as long as they hold on to that lead. Rashid Bay, a three at the buzzer, and St. Joe's is the number one seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament in Philly. They beat fellow Philly team, LaSalle, by three. People are screaming in this music, aren't they? Our next stop, the Southeastern Conference, Shaq. And the all-time Dale Brown team on hand for the final game in Baton Rouge for the LSU coach, Maurice Carter and company, getting it off to a good start. But Glendon Alexander bringing Arkansas close in Dale Brown's final game. It's a tight one. His final game in Baton Rouge. Of course, he has a game coming up in the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Maybe more if they win. Right now, they're leading Arkansas by six. If Arkansas falls to 15 and 11, their at-large hopes would be dealt a severe blow. Georgia at 9-6 in the conference could be on their way to a 10th win in Athens. They lead Tennessee by 6. Wake Forest is struggling in the ACC with Florida State, and Tulane had a huge Conference USA game on campus today against Louisville. Scores and highlights of those as we continue on Championship Week. Should be a great game tomorrow on ABC as Duke takes on North Carolina up at the top of the ACC. Carolina, the undefeated February. Of course, Wake Forest still there. Wake still hoping to earn a share of the conference title with the Blue Devils at Florida State to close out the ACC regular season. And a little bit of a struggle for Wake today. Ricardo Peral misses, but Tim Duncan puts in the rebound. He's gone over 2,000 career points and 1,500 career rebounds in the game in Tallahassee. But FSU getting it done. Brandel Jackson off the miss. Kept it alive. Got Duncan in the air and got it to go. Wake Forest trailed at the half. Right now tied with Florida State at 42 apiece. A Wake loss here. And no matter what happens tomorrow, Duke wins the ACC and the number one seed in the conference tournament. Boy, Tulane really needed one at home at Fogelman, that nasty, hot little gym taking on Louisville. Jody Nelson, Lawrence Nelson, he had a career game today. And Gerald Honeycutt on senior day. The steal, look out. Oh, my. This is a very talented and dangerous team if they can find a way in. They won 11 straight, lost four in a row, and now Tulane has won four in a row. They'll be the two seed in the Conference USA Tournament at 20 wins, 
on a run. Get the feeling Tulane may have locked something up today by knocking off Louisville by 12. Also in Conference USA, the top seed in the tournament, Cincinnati trailing at Memphis. Emotional game here. This is Larry Finch's final home game as head coach at his alma mater. Oklahoma trying to get win 17 on the road at the Ferrell Center and leading Baylor by 7 in Waco. Purdue second in the Big Ten. How does Gene Cady keep doing it? They're trying to get win 17. It would be their 12th conference win and four in a row down one at Carver Hawkeye. A reminder coming up, automatic bid number five is handed out as the College of Charleston takes on Florida International. We'll join it in progress as soon as we are done in the OVC. More scores and highlights. Don't touch the remote. Some people don't like conference tournaments, and here's why. Even though they're great TV and they're so much fun to watch, Iona won 20 games again this year. Matter of fact, they won 22 games. They're in the white uniforms, and Donnell Mitchell has the team that won the regular season Metro Atlantic Conference Championship up. But Fairfield and John Tice came scrambling back. This game played in Buffalo, and Cord Francis and Fairfield, the Stags, the eighth seed, 8-18 eight in the regular season. Two conference wins all year. They knock Iona out, and Iona's likely to the NIT for a second straight year. They were knocked down the semifinals last year. So Fairfield, the eighth seed, moves on. You'll see the MAAC title game on ESPN as championship week continues. In the Colonial, five seed William & Mary takes out four seed Virginia Commonwealth. The top seed is Old Dominion, and they're up in their first round game. In the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, Wisconsin Green Bay, the four seed moves on. Milwaukee leading Butler as it's very early, the number one seed in some trouble. These are regular season games in the MAC in Eastern Michigan up five, trying to get its 20th win on the season. And Ohio, which is playing a very tough schedule the last few weeks, trailing the Broncos by one at the half. Here's what's coming up the rest of the day and evening on ESPN. After the automatic bid to the big dance out of the TAC, we go bowling, a little keggling for you. Then Sports Center at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Follow that up with two interesting games tonight. Kelvin Cato didn't even make the trip for Iowa State to Oklahoma State. Big one for seeding within the conference and in the NCAA tournament, New Mexico and Utah on the WAC, all wrapped up by Sports Center at 11:30 Eastern. Back to the OVC. Dwayne and Jay have the second half after this. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by the complete line of 1997 Lincoln Automobiles. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Welcome back to Nashville for the Ohio Valley Conference Championship matchup. And to have Murray State leading by one, 31-30 with Jay Billis, Dwayne Stats, Bubba Wells, double figures, 10 points, Jay. He's had to work awfully hard for those 10. And to Terry Mays has been the guy that's really frustrated Bubba Wells with that post defense. You can see using his left leg to get leverage on Wells, push him further out on the floor, and Wells cannot get the ball. Look at the quickness to get around in front. Bubba Wells just cries uncle. He doesn't want any more of it. On the other end, Chad Townsend has been spectacular. 15 points in that first half. The pull-up jump shots, he was taking Adrian Sensabaugh, Joe Sibbett to the basket. And when Vincent Rainey had been struggling in that first half with only two points on 0 for 6 shooting, Chad Townsend really stepped up big. 46% from the floor for Austin Peay, 39 for the Racers of Murray State. The free throw shooting, 9 of 9 for Murray State. Townsend with 15, Wells with 10. Only two players in this game and double figures. With Rainey scoring only two in that first half, only twice this year has he failed to reach double figures. He had nine against Arkansas State and eight against Tennessee Tech. And Murray State has the basketball to start playing the second half. Austin P will start out in man-to-man -man in the second half, and Sibbett is still on Townsend. Townsend working out front, Mays. And he'll pop the first shot of the second half down to Hamilton off the rebound to Dawson. And Rainey, so that completes the five on the floor for Murray State to start the second half. Witherspoon and Wells, Crenshaw, here's a shot by Dawson, not going to go. And it's Witherspoon on the rebound. Now to Pearson Sippet, the five on the floor for Austin P. What a save right there by Crenshaw as Austin P. retains possession. Pierce out front for the basketball. 
there's going to be something called pretty soon down low with Mays and Wells, either offensively or defensively. They're both going at it. Hard. It's three misses, and then they scramble for the rebound. There's a whistle. A foul coming against Murray State. Murray State Chad, Chad Townsend. Townsend. Look at how Mays is breaking contact to get around in front, but he's also trying to use leverage. He's wrenching his body around Bubba Wells. And Sooner or later, Wells is going to get tired of that and retaliate to try to get open. It's been very difficult for him down in the low block. something sooner or later. I mean, that's been the focal point for both the coaches, for us, and every fan as to how that's going to be called down low. The classic advantage-disadvantage situation. You can see Bubba Wells trying to be careful not to push off, and a little more of the innocuous contact. There's been certainly worse than that First in this exchange. on Mays. With a spoon. A move inside, a little shake and bake there, and to the bucket, up and in. Witherspoon with a pair. Austin P up by one. Both these teams having some success with dribble penetration, forcing help and recover situations. Neither team doing a particularly good job of hitting their perimeter shots, but that happens this time of year. Got to find a way to score. Rainey trying to find a way, and here's a call inside. Rainey with just two first half points takes it inside and draws the foul. This one will be against Witherspoon, and that's going to be number three on him. Well, Jake Powers can come in off the bench for Witherspoon. Powers had a terrific first half in just nine minutes. He had four points and four rebounds, always seemed to be around the ball. Way inside, rolls it off, rebound, back up, not gonna go. The ball alive and picked up by Wells. Well, he's had some tough luck inside, but how about that rebound and the hops to get back up quickly for the follow? Now Wells takes it inside, dishes to the corner, Grinshaw, and a three attempt, no good. The rebound, Rainey. That's a shot that Reggie Crenshaw was dropping against Tennessee Tech tonight, a little tougher. Townsend, the ball loose, out of bounds. It'll belong to Austin P. And Townsend says, that's my fault. Well, he knew when you leave your feet, you better have something to do with the ball. And Townsend got caught in the air with nothing to do. He threw it into press row. Holy Pierce. Very little transition in this game, and as we talked about at the top of the broadcast, this time of year, if you want to be successful in March, you've got to execute in the half court. Well, it's down to the baseline. Missed the shot. Grinshaw back up and in, and a whistle. A foul coming as Crenshaw will get credit for the bucket. Arnell Hamilton. He'll be charged with a foul. Reggie Crenshaw sticking with it. He had it knocked away by Townsend. Went up strong, got the contact, and got the ball up off the glass and to go in. The top rebounder for Austin P. Reggie Crenshaw really did a nice job when Bubba Wells was out for those 12 games. He was the governor's leading scorer, really took it upon himself to try to lead this team from the center spot. And Crenshaw converts this one, making it a three-point play. Harris back in the game, replacing Hamilton, who departs with three fouls. A four-point contest. Murray State starting out the second half, much the same that it started out the first, very slowly offensively. Rainey puts it up and in. Over Witherspoon and Rainey with a field goal. Now Witherspoon working on Harris, looking for operating room, nothing. Wells back to Rainey. Trying to work his way in against Mays, and boy, Mays is there. Bounce pass is loose. That ball's out of bounds. Last touch by Witherspoon. Now behind the back feed, and Witherspoon lost it out of bounds. Here's a long pass, Dawson, and it's broken up. The pass intended for Mays broken up by Reggie Crenshaw. Dawson looking for the home run pass to try to catch Austin P. napping, and 
You can see that there have been no easy baskets in transition again. Very difficult to get that kind of play after a turnover. And a Harris. Now Rainey springs to the top and misses the shot. Wells rebounding. Looked like it slipped out of his hands on the way up, and Vincent Rainey having a tough day. Sivet, this is a three. No good, but it's put back up and in. Witherspoon with the putback. Murray State lost Joe Sivet a little bit in transition. That forced Matt Harris to come out and pick him up. And that opened up, in turn, the offensive glass for Mike Witherspoon. Nobody blocked him out. Taking care of Harris and the middle. Inside for Austin P. Rainey tries to dart in. And we have a whistle and a foul called on the floor. As Rainey forced the issue a bit. It's going to be Colby Pierce charged with that foul. And a timeout on the floor. 37-33, Austin P. Well, Wake Forest not exactly finishing the season with a bang. Florida State playing well. James Collins, Kirk Luckman the hoop. Wake just hit a three to cut it to two. We'll keep an eye on it. Wake. The Wake Forest has its hands full with Florida State. And here, Austin P has a four-point lead on Murray State. We have 15.45 left to play in this contest. Murray State led by one at the half. 43% for Austin P here in the second half. Murray State really struggling. They're not getting any easy looks at the basket. Now Townsend off the glass and in. Leading in, Chad Townsend. Townsend has 17. He's coming off his highest scoring game of the year last night when he had 22 against Middle Tennessee State. He's the guy that's gotten it going for Mark Gottfried. You would think they want to keep going to him, especially when he's got the ball in his hands. He can take Simmons off the dribble. If the defense comes over to him, he's a good distributor. He can lay it off. Pierce. Oh, against Townsend. Oh, look at Renshaw Mays working on ball. Knocked away. Grinshaw turns it over. Mays is doing a great job on Bubba Wells. Even if he picks up a few fouls, and Dave Luce is arguing his case that he should pick up a few, but he's holding inside. But the Terry Mays has done a nice job of just getting all over Bubba Wells and not allowing him to see it. And as time clicks off the clock, that's less time that Bubba Wells has to put points on the board and really hurts you. Eight Austin P turnovers. Murray State getting the ball back, and the shot by Michael Harris comes flying in on the back. Harris will pick up his third foul well, on the rebound Harris attempt. Number 33, Matt Harris, that is his third. So Harris has three. Hamilton has three. The two big men for Murray State. They've done such a nice job with their perimeter. They're not particularly worried about fouls for Harris and Hamilton. What you're worried about is team fouls. You want to be able to have the ability to get out and defend. And Mays is going to get caught with the foul right there. And Mays picks up the technical. A foul and a technical call will be the second foul on Mays, preceding the technical. That is not a good play by Terry Mays doing Yeoman's work down low, trying to get around in front. He's going to get the foul called on him, and his reaction is what's going to get him the technical foul. You can see the reaction right here. So now, all of a sudden, Joe Sibbett goes to the free throw line to shoot the technical free throws. Then Austin P is going to get the ball back. Sibbett, a 77% free throw shooter, misses the first one. He has another one coming on the Mays technical. And the Mays technical counts. That's a contact technical, so that's going to count as a personal foul against him, making that a two-foul possession for him alone. In the game for Murray State, number 14, uh, Hamilton. Hamilton replaces and Harris. replaces Matt Harris. Wells and Pierce off the inbound. Really spin in the game with Sivet and Crenshaw for Austin P. May's going to switch off of Wells. Hamilton going to take it. And a move off the glass and in. And a whistle. 
So Bubba Wells, who had 10 at the half, is fouled here. And he could just smell the basket when he saw Hamilton on him. He took him out to the perimeter, the spin move, and the finish. And Bubba Wells perhaps has some new life for Dave Luce. And Rainey picks up the foul his second. Here comes Adrian Sensabaugh into the game, replacing Sibbett. Sensabaugh, perhaps the quickest and fastest player on this Austin P team. We've already seen some of that quickness demonstrated in the first half. Well, Sensabaugh was a high school triple jump champion. He was also a high school All-America quarterback, but he got knocked cold in one of his games and decided that basketball's for me. Wells converts a three-point play, and it's a six-point lead for Austin P. Now Mays, Dawson, down in the corner. Hamilton, Rainey, and Townsend, the five on the floor for the Racers. Hamilton retrieves the lost ball, knocked away again. The handoff to Rainey. And he will pop it in and out, and the rebound to Bubba Wells. Pierce looking down court. He'll pop from 15. A little short off the front of the rim. Mays rebounding. How many in and outs has Murray State had today? Townsend a jump stop and a pass back out to Rainey. Takes it inside. It will not go down. Wells with a rebound. Fighting Darren Dawson for the basketball that time down. Wells will shoot it. It will not go down. Rainey with a rebound. Bubba Wells has gotten some open looks. Just not able to knock him down. And Mark Gottfried wants his team to calm down a little bit. He'll take a 20-second look here. Down by six. It's a 13-18 time remaining on the game clock. Austin P has opened this six-point lead. Tomorrow more. NCAA basketball as championship week continues coming up at 4.30 Eastern. It will be the Southern Conference Championship matchup here on ESPN. That Southern Conference, a very difficult one. Marshall having an outstanding season. And one of Mark Gottfried's former colleagues, Greg White, has done a nice job with the Thundering Herd in the Southern Conference. Murray State in possession of the basketball. Johnson. The Austin P run 11 4 over the past 5 20 to establish this lead. Still, don't you get the feeling, Dwayne, that these teams are still kind of feeling each other out? Neither one seems very comfortable. Rainey hits. That's a two for Vincent Rainey. A four point game. Don't want to get him feeling it. Here's another guy you don't want feeling it. Here's Bubba Wells. We'll have to go back to get it. Wells with only 13 points, but that can change in a hurry. And that is in and out. Would not drop. Hamilton rebounds. Two defenders back. A three on two. Townsend to the glass. Count it. And he draws the whistle. Chad Townsend has been spectacular. He's making intelligent decisions in transition. He's making intelligent decisions in the half court. You can see he knows he has a mismatch with Crenshaw. He's got the quickness. And Crenshaw not able to move his feet to establish position. Got caught on the side a little bit. And when there was contact, Townsend went right up for the shots. 19 points today, only averaging 13 on the season. Coming off the 22 against Middle Tennessee State. And he hits that one. But just like that, it's a one-point game again. The foul on Crenshaw, number one against him. It's 41-40, Austin P. That will be Pierce. That last possession by P was another example of how tight these rims have been for these players. That shot, ordinarily, by Bubba Wells probably would have dropped in. But well, it just rattled around. Working against Rainey, takes him inside, and that one will drop for Wells. He's got a nice touch, doesn't he? Left or right hand in the lane. Austin P by three. Townsend accelerating. And a whistle. Bucket would not drop for him. He picks up another foul. Gets a little bit of advice. Gets a little bit of advice from his coach, Mark Godfrey, who knows a thing or two about guards, also knows a thing or two about recruiting. Here's Bubba Wells getting into the lane. A little bit of contact inside. But he's still able to get that soft shot up with these tight rims. 
Not a whole lot of give. Townsend, a 70% shooter, misses. He has another one coming. Third leading scorer on this team, but he's leading the way for Murray State in this game. And he converts this one. Number 23, Willie Ivory. Willie Ivory reports in for Austin P. Since the ball departs for the Governors. Austin P. now up by two in possession of the basketball. Austin P. has really struggled in the half court, trying to get the ball inside to Wells. And other players not particularly looking for their shots. Witherspoon's done a nice job of trying to get his. This one on the way and counts that one. That's a big bucket for Ivory, who comes right off the bench and delivers again, as he did hitting his first shot in the first half. We mentioned he was a streak shooter, and he's running on that positive streak. 46-41. And there's an answer by Vincent Rainey. Rainey, who had just two in the first half, hits a big three, and we're back to a two-point game. And Murray State going to stick with man-to-man. -man. They went zone for a possession. But Ivory hit that three to take him out of it. not going to go for Witherspoon. Hamilton rebound. Wells upset. He thinks he got bumped by Rainey on the way to the basket, but you're not going to get that call in a championship game, especially at this level. Here's Mays firing away. That will not go down. That's out of bounds. It'll belong to Murray State. Rainey trying to make his presence felt in this game has closed the gap to two with this three. It is over in Tallahassee, and Lamar Greer and company have done it. Florida State knocks off Wake Forest. Wake has lost three of its last five. Duke is the number one seed in the ACC tournament. Wake Forest and Florida State will meet again in Thursday's quarterfinal on ESPN. Guys. As Wake Forest continues to have some problems upended by Florida State here, we have a two-point game, 46-44. The breakout on the top two scores for these two teams individually and what they've done so far today. Rainey, seven of those nine coming in the second half. And they both had to work so hard for their shots. Dawson to Townsend. Townsend, the big score today for Murray State. Nice job by Crenshaw hedging out on Townsend so he couldn't turn the corner. Dawson goes down to Rainey. Rainey, what a move. He hung up there and put it up and in. Rainey changed directions and a little delay and got the layup. The game is tied at 46. Murray State going back into a 2-3 zone after the acrobatic shot by Rainey. What a play. Pierce steps up. Just under 15 misses. Mays rebounding. Counts in a full head of steam. Foul on the floor. A little bit of frustration there by Bubba Wells, you can see. And look at the nice crossover dribble by Rainey, taking it by Witherspoon, and when the help side comes over, it's up and under, off the glass. Vincent Rainey, raining in, baskets. Witherspoon leaves, and Powers is back in. Now Rainey again starts to move on Powers, lost it off to Mays in the corner. That will not go, kept alive. Dawson trying to put it up this foul. Getting physical here in the battle for the rebound. The foul against Reggie Crenshaw, his second of the game. Two consecutive frustration fouls for Austin P. Off the missed shot with Dawson's rebound. Crenshaw came in and had just had enough of that. But the way that Murray State has been shooting free throws, you can almost count these. Dawson, count this one. He's a 90% shooter for the year. 6'5", sophomore, flying for Mark Godfrey. And Joe Simmons returns to the game, replacing Colby Pierce. Simmons has not gotten a lot of open looks today, but the same thing happened to him last night against Tennessee Tech, but it doesn't take much of an opening for him to get a shot off, and he can get hot in a hurry. This one will not go. Wells rebounds. Murray State has grabbed the lead. Racers leading Austin P. 47-46. Murray State going back to man-to-man. -man. Rainey's going to take Wells out front. 
Wells moves the ball to Ivory. Simic flashes back out front to take control. They what a lot of big guys could take lessons from Mays and his post defense down low. As a guard, he's playing great post defense. And the six on the shot clock. Wells inside, and there's a shovel up. Ivory has it knocked away loose on the floor. Townsend gets rid of the ball to Hamilton and back to Townsend. Townsend accelerating. Ivory trying to stay with him as Townsend tries to go to the bucket, and here's a whistle and a foul. Dwayne, that is championship basketball played by Chad Townsend. Just a brilliant play on the other end of the court to drop the ball off to a teammate when he regained possession, pushed it up the court, and really tested that defense, drawing the foul. That's just outstanding basketball by Chad Townsend. He was the guy that knocked the ball away, and he gives up his body getting on the floor, and before he could walk with it, he dropped it off to Hamilton. And the first foul of the game against Ivory. Townsend hits this one. Townsend again out of the Air Force. This matches his season's high of 22. That came Andrew last night. Austin P, number 21, Austin Pierce. P will make another change. Ivory leaves and Pierce is back in there. Ivory got a little bit of a Michael Jordan look to him, doesn't he? Number 23 wearing the sweatband high on the elbow. Townsend hits this one. A three-point lead for Murray State. Now some pressure in the backcourt. 2-2-1. Two, two, They'll drop back into man. Civic. Pierce. Out of the corner. Crenshaw on a big one. Crenshaw answers with a three to knot it at 49. Townsend again. Almost out of control. Got rid of the ball. Rainey trying to work. And a travel violation against Vincent Rainey. So just like that, the game tied, and Austin P comes back with possession. Here's running the offense for the Governors. This lineup will allow Bubba Wells to take Rainey down low and post him. And that's exactly where he's gone as Rainey deflects it on the attempted shot. And a whistle and a foul against Rainey. Against most big guys, that would have been terrific defense by Vincent Rainey, pushing the big guy off of the block out into the corner where he's got to make a very difficult post move. But that's certainly not enough to stop Bubba Wells. Anytime he gets the ball, he is within range to put it up. And he's got a variety of moves offensively to get the ball on the board. Bubba Wells at the line. And misses the first one. 26 NBA teams here to take a look not only at Bubba Wells, but also at Vincent Rainey. Last night they were looking at Lorenzo Coleman of Tennessee Tech. And Wells hits this one. There's some talent that has come out of this conference last year, Marcus Brown. Well, Murray State took his game right to the NBA with Portland. There's down to Dawson. Hamilton high to Townsend. Townsend directing the show out there. Now Dawson, this is a three. Dawson hits the three. Quickly down to court to Wells. What a move to the bucket up and in. And Wells answers with a quick two. Wells a little slow defensively to get to Dawson, but as soon as that shot went up, he was headed down the other way. The game tied at 52. 43 to play. Bonus in effect for both teams. This one will not drop for Townsend. Austin P back. Pierce comes out of there looking down court, but no opening. Now to Wells. Wells has it knocked away. Retrieves it. Up and in. Randy slapped it away, and Wells turned it into two. Boy, that is some kind of touch. That's a difficult shot, especially having the ball knocked away from you. When you're catching it, has to pivot into the lane. A little 15-footer and leaning as well. Hamilton. A two-point Austin P. lead. This one is good. Leaning in there, Vincent Rainey. So the game is tied at 54. All the makings have gone right down to the wire as it did a year ago. Rainey so tough off the dribble. Crenshaw just a little bit late. Did a nice job not fouling as the senior went up. 
Isn't this just what we expected, Dwayne? Got a back and forth ball game. Sibbett baseline, and it's rejected from behind by Hamilton. Mays out of there with a basketball. Around Pearson to the bucket for two for the Terry Mays. Looked like there was a little bit of contact, but no foul. It certainly didn't phase to Terry Mays, showing the kind of strength that he has in transition. Now he's going to guard Bubba Wells again. Wells with a pass to Pierce, but it's deflected. Pat picked up by Powers and a whistle. Jake Powers will get credit for the bucket. A foul against Murray State and against Arnell Hamilton. That will give him four. And we talked about Jake Powers and how he just seems to have the knack for being around the action and where the ball is. Four points, four rebounds, and only nine points in the first half comes in in the second and immediately makes something good happen. He might not be the best player on the court in terms of talent, but I'll tell you what, Jake Powers knows how to get it done. He's a young man that knows how to play this game. Sibbett out, sends the ball back in. Townsend has a scratch on his elbow and he's going to have to leave the game. To get Number that 20, Aaron Page. covered as Page, Aaron Page, the 6'5 freshman, replaces Townsend. I'll tell you what, Mike, uh, Mark Godfrey might as well get over there and fix that wound himself. He wants to get Townsend back in there. And Powers hits a big one. 6 13 to play. 57 56, Austin P. Back following this. The first and best sale of the year. It's Motor Cars, Chrysler, Plymouth, Jeep, and Eagles. 97 sale abrasion. For a limited time, find rock bottom prices. On over 200 new vehicles. Lease a new 97 Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $339 for 36 months with, with zero, zero down. down. Or lease new 97 Seven Passenger Voyagers for only $259 for 36 months with, with zero, zero down. down. Hurry! These are limited time offers at Motor Cars, Chrysler, Plymouth, Jeep, and Eagle. A half mile west of Great Northern Mall on the Rain Road in North Olmstead. You hear it all the time, one size fits all, right? Not when it comes to computers at PC Elite in Amherst. PC Elite will work with you to custom build a system that's an exact fit for your needs. PC Elite also has the computer accessories you need, a repair center, and even offers help in learning computeries in your home. PC Elite, next to Sparkle Market on Route 58 in Amherst. College Hoops, just log on! And enter the ESPN Net Sports Zone Tournament Challenge, presented by Pizza Hut and Double Tree Hotels. Fill out your brackets, compete against thousands of other fans, make the right picks, and be crowned king of college hoops. Log on to ESPN Net Sports Zone, and you can win a trip for two to the 1998 Men's Final Four. Accommodations at Double Tree Hotels and 64 large pizzeria stuffed plus pizzas from Pizza Hut. The ESPN Net Sports Zone Tournament Challenge enters starting March 9th. The picture on your right is live from the John Crest Arena, Charleston, the College of Charleston, the top seed in the TAC. That game is underway as they take on Florida International. The winner gets the automatic bid. We will get you down to that game as soon as we are done in Nashville, see if teams from Charleston can do the two steps to the dance. Dwayne. A one-point game in Nashville. Austin P. up 57-56. Murray State with a basketball. Vincent Rainey handling the ball. 11 lead changes in this game, eight times. Little 2-3 set out front. The UCLA high-low offense. Shuffle cut. Mays looking low. As Vincent Rainey. Dawson he puts it up. Missed the shot. And the rebound for Sensiball. Big possession for Austin P. To put a little bit of distance between them and timeout, Murray Austin State. And Dave Luce wants to talk it over with a 20 second timeout. He can sense that it's getting and down to winning time with 535 remaining in the ballgame. His team up by one, 57 56. Coming up tonight on ESPN, 7 30. It'll be Iowa State and Oklahoma State from Stillwater. Oklahoma State has won eight of the last nine games between those two schools. In at 9:30, New Mexico and Utah from Salt Lake City. Keith Van Horn, the second leading scorer in the WAC, at a little better than 22 points a game. New Mexico handing Utah its only loss in the conference this season. And it's all on ESPN. 
Now a whistle and a foul coming against Mays. Mays back on Wells. That's his fourth foul because of the technical foul that he got earlier. And that really hamstrings him defensively. He's probably going to have to switch off Bubba Wells. And they have Mays and Hamilton each with four. And he will have two. And Wells goes to the line for two. Wells at the moment, 20 points. It's 21. Two men in double figures for Austin P. Crenshaw has 13. Here comes Ivory back into the game, replacing Powers. Townsend at 23, leading the way for Murray State. Wells has had to work awfully hard for the points that he's gotten today. 22 on the game. And you know he's going to get his points, Wayne. You just want to make sure he works hard to get them and that you're doing a good job of shutting down his supporting cast because if a guy like Sibbett or Reggie Crenshaw gets off, that's when you can really have problems against Austin Peay. The game can get away from him. Now, a hold here as Townsend started to make a move and Sensible will be charged with a foul against Austin Peay. It'll be three on the 6'2 senior out of Bristol, Virginia. And Townsend did a nice job of selling that call. He's probably strong enough that he could have pushed off Adrian Sensabaugh and made sure that everybody in the building, including the three Zebras, knew that he was getting held. Townsend to the line. Another one on the way as he converts the first one. Dave Luce, seventh year at Austin P, 11th year overall collegiately. Out of Memphis State at the time in 1970. Pretty good shortstop in Memphis State along That's with his right. basketball career. Shot missed and Austin P comes down with the ball. Pierce, Colby Pierce out of there with possession. This game has come down, as we mentioned, to half court execution. You want to win games in March, you want to win championships, you got to execute in the half court. And here's going to be another foul. Down low trying to guard Bubba Wells going against Townsend. Townsend at 6-1. A distinct disadvantage there. And he's charged with foul number three. And the difficulty that Bubba Wells presents is you can't really muscle him because he's so strong and you're going to get a foul called against you. And he's also quick enough that it's tough for smaller men to use their quickness to break contact and get around in front. That time Chad Townsend getting caught in no man's land there. And really, Mays has been the only one that's been able to do a good job down low on Bubba Wells. Well, it tips it again at 23. Harris back in for Ornell Hamilton. And ultimately, Bubba Wells is just going to wear you down. And he probably could have gotten a lot more fouls called, depending on how close it was being called down low. He has 24. Townsend back. Murray State down by four. Swings it to Harris. To Terry Mays. Rainey pops out. 15 footer not going to go. Down to the baseline. Pierce after the basketball. Up looking down toward the sensible. Murray State on back out to Pierce. Murray State on offense still has to keep good spacing. They were all seemingly inside of the three point line right on top of one another when that shot was taken. Wells takes the bounce pass, tries to go low to Pierce, deflected, but picked up by Austin P. and Crenshaw. Sends the ball, returns it to Pierce. Wells again. And Harris comes up with a steal. Harris reaching in, he's on his way, and lays it up and in for a pair. 61 59. The Austin P. lead is two. So Matt Harris, the 6 8 junior at 240. And rumbling out of there after the steal for two. And usually you expect your guards to come from the weak side or the blind side to knock that ball away. That time it was your big guy, Matt Harris. And he took it all the way to finish. What a great job defensively. And Austin P wants a 20-second timeout. We're down at 3.53. Austin P will make a will make a change here. Sibbett back in for Sensible. Murray State now in a close game, down to two points with 3.53 remaining. And they have just blown out their opposition over their last five games. Be interesting to see how they react with one that's definitely going down to the wire. But they certainly reacted very positively on that last possession with Austin P. the chance to go up six, maybe seven if they hit a three. Matt Harris comes up with just a gigantic defensive play. Now Crenshaw does the inbounding. 
Murray State averaging just under 80 points a game, close to 79, 78.7. Here's a whistle. And it's going to come against Austin P and Bubba Wells. Wells pushing off with the arm. I'll tell you, Bubba Wells is very fortunate he didn't get a technical foul there. He tried to hand the ball to the official in a not so gentlemanly fashion. Also, kicked the ball a little bit after that possession, just showing a little bit of the frustration. He hasn't been getting the calls that he wants to get down low. And you can see just pushing off Chad Townsend on the high end playing some post defense. And Wells using Townsend's momentum against him and just got the foul down low. That's a very difficult situation. You want to try to hold your position, but at the same time, as a postman offensively, hey, it's not your fault that momentum's carrying the guy out of the play. So Townsend hit the first one and converts this one. So Townsend stepped up, hit them both. This game is tied at 61 with 3.45 left. LSU won Dale Brown's final game in Baton Rouge. Memphis trying to do the same for its departing head coach, Larry Finch. Chris Garner knocks down the three, and number nine, Cincinnati, is down seven. Meantime, in the TAC Championship, Florida International, which won the automatic bid last year, up by two. We'll get you there as soon as we're done in the OVC. Game tied at 61 with three minutes and 45 seconds left to play the championship game of the Ohio Valley Conference. This is what it's all about, Dwayne. You got a tie game, just under four minutes to play. Both these teams have been in this championship game the last three years, and they are just bitter rivals. Willie Ivory takes it to the hoop and puts it up and in, so he's inserted and scores again. He responded his first time out of the first half again early in the second half and drives to the bucket for a pair there. Just a breakdown defensively. Nobody came over from the weak side to challenge. Brady swings it to Townsend. Sibbett with him. Now Mays takes the pass, turns and pops for two from about 15. Finally, to Terry Mays able to get one that hits the rim a little bit to go in the basket instead of creeping its way back out. Under three minutes to play, tied at 63. Wells draws a crowd, and the pop not going to go this time for Ivory. Murray State back with a basketball to the hands of Chad Townsend. Down to Mays working the baseline. Now underneath, Rainey misses, and a big rebound from Crenshaw. Great job by Wells defensively to bother that shot underneath by Rainey. Now Wells loses the ball. He'll have to go back after the scramble and a held basketball here. And Austin P will retain possession. To Terry Mays was trying to call timeout. You could see the difference in going after that ball. That was a championship play by to Terry Mays. He got on the floor. Bubba Wells was bending over at the waist. The possession arrow now in favor of Murray State following this one. Two full timeouts left for each team. One twenty second. Murray State ten team fouls. And the next one for Austin P will be the tenth, which gets into the two shot fouls. Jake Powers in the game. Little box set going to be a screen down low for Wells. Well defended. Pierce looking low. Crenshaw from the elbow. This is Wells. And Wells makes it a two point game. 65 63. We should correct that last graphic because Austin P used its last 20 seconds. So the governors are without a 20 second timeout. Townsend looking for Rainey against Wells. Puts it up and in and a whistle. Wells thought he was straight up. But he's going to get a foul out of that. Well, the reason he got the foul when he was leaning right into Rainey, he had both his forearms into Vincent Rainey. Here you get a look at it. Rainey getting the ball along the low block. You can see those forearms pushing Rainey, and as he goes up, just gives him a little bit of body, and it's that right hand that got the call. At the line, Murray State. Well, that's four on Wells. It comes with a minute 43. And all of a sudden, Bubba Wells might have to back off just a tad defensively with that fourth foul. Rainey hits this one. 
So it's 66-65. Murray State's first lead since the 627 mark. What a second half by Vincent Rainey. 16 points overall, 14 of those coming in the second period. Here's Wells drawing two defenders. And he throws it away. Harris in there to intercept. So the ball belongs to Murray State. And he's come up big defensively. What a play by Matt Harris. And not a good job by Bubba Wells of being strong with the ball as the double team came over. And now Murray State calls a full timeout. With a minute 20 left to play. Murray State with the ball up by one. 66-65. Important game for bubble teams, UMass and Temple at the Mullen Center in Amherst, Edgar Padilla. Steals it from Pepe Sanchez, the great hustle, he locates Tyrone Weeks, or Carlton Clark, Charlton Clark actually did. UMass is up six there. Meantime, Florida International had the lead up to five. It's now three. We'll get you to the tack as soon as we're done in Nashville. Murray State up by one, 66-65 with a minute 20 left to play. More NCAA Basketball Championship Week on ESPN2. Coming up tomorrow, the Missouri Valley Conference semifinal at 5 Eastern, and then at 7 Eastern, it will be the Sunbelt Conference semifinal from Little Rock. Murray State using a full timeout. They're down to one with 122nd. Austin P with two. Murray State enjoying the possession arrow. State with a basketball. Townsend. Rainey working against Witherspoon. That goes out of bounds. Going to belong to Austin P. Harris couldn't corral it. The ball deflected. And Austin P. gets it back. Now Sibbett, Joe Sibbett, will re enter the game. Since the ball departs for Sibbett. And you would think that Joe Sibbett would go immediately to the side of Bubba Wells. To create a little two-man game and take some of the pressure off Wells down low. If he gets the double team, he can kick it out to Simmons for the three. Wells with the basketball. Under a minute to play. Wells puts it up. Count that one. 67-66. Austin P. Pretty Here comes Townsend down to the baseline around Simmons. Cut off there and a timeout. Murray State. Murray State. Calling for the 22nd timeout it has left. Now Austin P will send Adrian Sensabaugh back into the game, replacing Sibbett. On the other end, Bubba Wells deciding to take Vincent Rainey off the dribble. Townsend comes over to help out. And he is just very smooth. Got a nice release and a quick release. He's had a tough time getting shots to go but still comes up with 28 big points. And 10 at the half, averaging 31.4 a game since coming back, including three with 40 or more. And 46 is high. That came against Moorhead State. The inbound is picked off by Sensabaugh. Sensabaugh comes up with the inbound. Big turnover, and now timeout, Austin P. Witherspoon calling for the timeout, since the ball with the intercept. Boy, what a big play on the inbound. That's always the danger when you're throwing long that somebody is going to step in, and since ball did a nice job of reading that pass, and with about 35 seconds left, that puts Austin P. in a very nice position. You can see Murray State just shut down, and the default play is to throw it deep to Townsend. And Sensabaugh just stepped right in front. Harris getting on the floor after it. Could have gotten a foul called on him. And the timeout, now 35 seconds left. A one-point ball game. Austin P. with the lead. So the flip-flop of Sibbett and Sensabaugh paying dividends for Dave Luce. And Sensabaugh, with his athletic ability, comes up with the intercept. And now Murray State with under 35 seconds to play, down by one. Well, the Murray State can afford to play good defense without fouling. The one thing they do not want to do is allow Austin P to run this clock down, get some penetration, and then hit a three, because that would move it out to a two-possession ball game and effectively end the chances that Murray State would have to win it. Anything inside of that line still keeps it a one-possession game. Murray State through the first 18 
40 of the second half had only two turnovers. They've come up with two big turnovers in the last 45 seconds of this one. And we talked about execution. When you get down to the end of a game, you want to execute in the half court. You also have to execute your out-of-bounds plays with two critical mistakes. The first was Chad Townsend taking it way too deep along the baseline, having to call the timeout. And then Murray State unable to inbound it on the next play. Subic's back in there for Sensabaugh. Wells on the inbound, and Pierce goes back to get it. And he is fouled to stop the clock. Dawson committing the foul. 33 seconds left. And this will send Pierce to the line. A judgment call made by Mark Gottfried to foul right away. Even if Colby Pierce hits both of these free throws, it's still a one possession game. With Austin P being up by three, Murray State can still go down to the other end, try to get a quick score, taking it to the basket, and then all of a sudden you got another one-point ball game, and anything can happen. Well, this put in for Powers for Austin P. And Colby Pierce picks the first of two. Rattled around a little bit for the 60% free throw shooter, and Austin P only shoots 64% as a team. But these are the big ones. This is how championships are won. Stepping up, hitting big free throws. And Pierce has his first two points of the game. They are big ones. To stretch out the lead to three. Here comes Townsend, who's played the game of his life. Townsend, baseline, puts it up. It's going to be short. The ball is loose. Still loose on the floor. A major pile up. And we have a jump ball. Murray State. Murray State. Holding the possession arrow, so they will hang on to possession. And it was Townsend at the bottom of the pile. And that was a smart play by Townsend, because when that ball was loose, all you wanted to do was tie it up, because you have the arrow. That's understanding the game situation. Nice play. So we have just over 20 seconds to play a three-point game. Let's check in with Mike Tarico in the studio. Mike. All right, Dwayne, while we have a moment, let's get you updated on some scores. Memphis trying to close out number nine, Cincinnati. So two top ten teams may go down today. Memphis, an eight-point lead inside of five minutes left as it's Larry Finch's final game as the Memphis head coach in Memphis. Of course, the Conference USA tournament is ahead. UMass on a Larry Kettner follow jam has just taken a five-point lead. Temple ball after the timeout with 15.4 left in Amherst. The winner obviously gets win 18 and helps themselves in a bubble situation. The game we're working to, the TAC championship, the College of Charleston hit four of its first 15 field goals. The lead was 24 to 12 a minute ago. Charleston's run off five straight to the College of Charleston within seven. We'll get you there as soon as we're done in Nashville. Dwayne. This matchup a year ago was not decided until the final seven tenths of a second. When Austin P won by two, sending Reggie Crenshaw to the line. We're down to 20.4 seconds now. Reminder, coming up following our game, we'll join the College of Charleston Florida International matchup, the TAC Championship matchup. It'll be in progress. Bob Carpenter and Lynn Elmore along for that one. A three-point ball game. Austin P leading. Murray State held a one-point advantage at the half, 31-30. Still plenty of time with just over 20 seconds. You don't necessarily have to get up a three, but if Murray State is able to run their out-of-bounds play, if they've got a three, they're certainly not going to turn it down. If you're Austin P, you want to get good pressure on the shot without fouling, and then everybody's got to get a body. you got to get five guys on the defensive board. This is the biggest defensive rebound of the year for Austin P. Dawson will initiate the inbound. Dawson looking for a man. Mays for three. Oh, it's good! Mays at three with 16.4 seconds. The game is tied at 69. Colby Pierce into the front court, and he calls a timeout with 12 seconds left. Unbelievable to Terry Mays. It's a three to tie the game at 69. We'll be right back to Nashville. Thank you. 
It's more of the same between Murray State and Austin P. Tied at 69 with 12 seconds left. To Terry Mays is number 51. He starts out in a stack on this out of bounds play. Then he comes off a double screen. When he catches it, he is turning in the air to launch this three up over Colby Pierce and gets it to go down. That's great execution of the out of bounds play and just a superior individual move by Mays. Arno Hamilton back replacing Harris for Murray State. Jake Powers will do the inbounding to Pierce. 